I was totally wrong about shooting film. First off, let's just address the elephant in the room. Film is not cheap, and it's never going to be cheap. Developing each role isn't cheap. Scanners are an investment, and I'm not Captain Moneybags over here. Taking all these factors into the community of people just getting into the hobby, I originally wanted to make something that felt laid back and inviting. You know, just like a basic YouTube video. But the thing I originally had oversight on was passion and how something painful and difficult has potential to manifest something truly beautiful. First of all, I think I pissed a lot of you off with that video. The video that shall not be named. We do not speak his name. Most of you had really kind things to say and saw where I was coming from. But there was also some pushback about how I was totally wrong and needed to go dive into a pit of fire or something. And I have to say you're right. Kind of. I mean, I was literally wrong in the video where I called my dad's camera a rangefinder when it's very clearly an SLR. Sometimes I mix up my cannons. But to be honest, I was a little nervous and wrote that script almost as quickly as that video came to fruition because I was just excited to make something again. Not to mention I used an AI program to fill in the gaps of sentences in that video, and I do this for most of my videos. So I think my sentiment might have been a little misconstrued. I wrote out the entire script, but some of the audio that was generated from old recordings of my voice might have felt a little off when tackling such a passionate topic. This choice, however, is made to make the process of completing a video a lot easier on me. I do this because I suffer from some pretty extensive vocal damage and limitations, but that's an entirely other story. It might take me many days or even weeks to record all of this audio, but I want this video to be me, my voice, so you can hear the intention and not just the execution. Because what I didn't expect from that first video was this reaction of those thinking I was attacking their art. And I'm clearly not. We can all like this stuff, buddy. I only wish to open the field of possibilities and allow everyone to feel welcome, especially new people. At the end of the day, maybe this is a lesson in slowing things down, thinking it all through from start to finish, like practicing the shooting of film. Only a few frames and a few seconds just a couple chances to get it right. And I never claimed to be the ambassador of digital. But if you guys need a king, you should probably go find someone more talented than me. I don't know how, but some even thought I was making the argument that using the camera on your phone was a solution and substitute for the rising cost of film. When if you watch the video, I was in fact arguing the exact opposite and saying I hate that shit. But I guess we all hear what we want to hear. Use what gear excites you. That's it. It's as simple as that. Maybe I wasn't clear or specific enough when making the first video, so I'll try again. The important thing is we got people talking and discussing the idea of capturing over documenting again. So in a lot of ways, I think I did exactly what I set out to do, and I'm thankful for the feedback in any way. I think in my original video, I underplayed my emotional connection to the format just based on the overall workflow that I've become accustomed to over the last decade. Digital is easy, fun, accessible, and it's how my brain has kind of worked for the last couple of years. But now that the conversation has been spinning, the thought of shooting film again excites me. I'm a little out of practice, and in a lot of ways, that makes it way more fun than only relying on what I know. I haven't shot medium format since we were assigned Holga cameras in high school, but for whatever reason, now I find myself looking at 6x7 cameras on eBay. They're all way out of my price range, but you know, I just want to see what that good, good life is all about. I feel left out of something that I feel connected to. Turns out, film is kind of important to me. 
even if it does force me to sell all of my belongings and firstborn children. There's a nostalgic ambiance that's impossible to ignore. It reminds me of that time in high school, and it feels that way when you look at it. It reminds me of the imperfections of an experience. The places we've been and the people we've known are not clear clinical outlines that have been scanned into our memory, but a hazy, vague viewfinder that's been romanticized and chugs further on over time. It's capable of capturing the emotion of the day a lot more than something taken with digital, and especially more than a phone camera, most of the time. I was reminded of this last year when my mom asked me to take a couple headshots of her in the backyard. And at first, we had settled on just using her phone while the lighting was good. But emotionally, there was something missing. She was battling stage 4 cancer and had requested that this was a way to preserve her hair and her look before starting her first sessions of chemo. It was a brutal time. I can't even explain it to you. Some of the most gut-wrenching torment I've ever had to navigate with the person that I look up to the most. So, for whatever reason, I was inspired to pick up my Nikon F2 for the first time in many years and load it with some film. I still had a couple rolls of HP5, so that's what we shot. Most of them were kind of posed and smiling as that's what she wanted. She wanted to feel like the badass she was about to become. But then my sister started cutting her hair. Not fully, but the tears that started to flow were impossible to resist. My mom braided a few strands together and held them close to her side, and I asked her to hold it out in the glow of the afternoon light. It was hard, but it just popped. This image made the entire roll of film worth it, and I was so thankful that I still knew what I was doing to a degree. It was simple and ordinary, but with the context of the day, profound and beautiful. It reminded me of a painting, or these sketches of houses my dad used to make when we were kids. There was nothing particularly special about this photo, but it unlocked a connection and respect for photography in a way I hadn't experienced in almost a decade. And now today, this picture is her trophy, something to look back on as the greatest mountain she ever climbed. Most computers and modern cameras don't quite have the shelf life you would expect. Or maybe you would expect it because you're smarter than me. The prices of them have fluctuated to almost a fraction of their original cost. My first Nikon DSLR from 2008 is worth less than $200 today. So at this point, maybe I should just throw the rest into crypto and waste the rest of my money. Meanwhile, my mom's 35 point shoot and my dad's old cannons worth basically the same, if not more, than when they first came out. Just a few years ago, these cameras felt affordable and available. Maybe you'd get lucky at a thrift shop, like I have a few times. Find some real fire. And I think that's all I was trying to say in that first video. We aren't f***ing collecting Pokemon cards and buying cameras because of their value. We're taking pictures. We're capturing moments. And if you're new to the hobby, and still trying to discover your artistic voice or what you want to capture, Maybe it's worth picking up an old digicam over that $1,200 point and shoot you found on some website's top 10 list. There's value in investment, and I want people to try new things. I just didn't want them to feel intimidated due to growing prices. And I just wanted to show an alternative than selling feet pics for an X100V. But do you, boo. Do. You. But that's also the world we live in. Things are just more expensive. Considering how much life has changed in our world, and how often some things that were here long before us are suddenly absent, leads me to believe that we should take advantage of the opportunities that still exist while we can. As much as I love my different cameras, there will always be that new upgrade on the way. The new TikTok clout chasing piece of equipment that all the drones will fly to and buy up and inflate the market. Only until that technology is deemed bad and old. But film, in many ways, has already hit its peak, and it's still around for a reason. 
Shooting in raw definitely has its advantages, but creatively there will always be this kind of opportunity for endless decisions that can kind of be overwhelming. You can edit a photo a thousand different ways and make it look like a completely different day than the time you shot it. But shooting on film? That's baked into the image. Forever. It looks that way because of chemistry, not how many presets you bought in Lightroom. And it's beautiful. 20 or 30 years from now, you may wish you had stocked up and had the hindsight to possibly invest in that redundant mini fridge just to store all that film in. Who needs Coke Zero when you can have an overstock of Kodak Gold? I've heard it said that digital is almost like sketching. You can spend way too long overworking your lines until it finally looks right. I don't, as an artist, I'm never gonna stop sketching out ideas, but I will need to eventually commit to them. And maybe that's where film can come in, when everything lines up imperfectly. So to make my photography journey a little more meaningful, I've decided to dance between both film and digital this year, depending on what the moment requires and demands or just basically how I feel. Not only to lean on what's easy and cheaper, but to push myself and find the best way to capture light and everything it touches, including the depths of my now empty wallet. We all deserve to spend our money in the ways that seem appropriate to us. So if purchasing a cheap digital camera inspires you to push forward in this hobby, do it. If you crave to only capture something in an analog way, more power to you. I won't even stop you. I can't. I don't even care what you had for dinner tonight. Images tell a story, and they always have. They can take you somewhere that you long so dearly to still know. But film? Film is like a time machine, which is corny as hell, but it's true. You already know the story. You remember the beat you took when snapping the frame. Every inch of speckled grain, and every sliver of light. There is something timeless in those images that will never lose their ability to conduct the emotion of an individual and take them there. So open that door, step inside this uncomfortable old DeLorean, cause yes, sure, the seats are too small and the entire thing is held together by fiberglass and dreams. But if my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit.